All right, here we go. Number 41, which expression is a factor of 18x squared minus 15x plus 2? Okay, so essentially when they're talking about factor, we need something that multiplies into this trinomial right here. And typically that's going to be two binomials. Uh, and then probably one of those will be one of our answer choices. Uh, notice they only have one of the factors. Usually when you factor, you have you know multiple pieces. So this is only just asking for which one of these pieces is one of our answer choices. So we're going to factor. Well, one of the ways I've taught you guys how to factor, or at least I did on my other uh, video, I can't remember what question it was, uh, maybe like near 17, I think it's 17 or 18. But anyways, uh, what we do is we take the a and c values of ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, so the a and the c, we multiply those together. 18 times 2 gets us 36. And then we put the b value, negative 15, at the bottom, and we ask ourselves, what two numbers multiply to positive 36, but then they add up to negative 15 when you add them together? All right. And some people are good at coming up with this uh, pretty quickly, and then some people like to write it out, like all the different things that multiply. So like things that multiply to 36, you could say like 1 and 36. Those are factors, but those don't add to negative 15, so we move along. And then we can go to 2... And I guess 18, we can go 3 and 12. We also got 4 and 9. And then um, since it needs to add up to negative 15, maybe we can look at negatives for all of these here. And we're looking for a combination that adds up right there. So it looks like that negative 3 and negative 12, that multiplies a positive 36, but then it adds up to negative 15. So those are your numbers, negative 3, negative 12. And then we're going to write x minus 3 and then x minus 12. And here's where you got to be careful. x times x is not 18x squared. That's because we got one additional step. This is kind of that weird step we talked about earlier. We take our a value and we divide by it. All right. And what I want you to do is some people say, oh, we swing around the denominator here. You do do that, but you need to always reduce your fractions fully. So we're going to reduce that 3 over 18. Those are both divisible by 3. 3 goes into 3 once, and then 3 goes into 18 six times. And then you can do the same thing on the next one, x minus, let's see, those are both divisible by 6. So 6 goes into 12 two times, and then 6 goes into 18 three times. And this is where you do the swing the denominator around. 6x, and then you leave them 1 right there, the negative 1. And then swing around the 3, 3x three minus 2. Okay, and that was a factoring technique. So we are looking for which factor is correct here, and it looks like A right there shows up, the 3x minus 2. So that is going to be your answer there. Uh, remember, when we're factoring 2, this is just a little extension. When we're factoring to check and see if our factors work, we can do what we call uh, we, we multiply two binomials, but we use the acronym FOIL to help ourselves do that. 6x times uh, 3x is 18x squared. That's the first times the first. The outside times the outside is negative 12x. That's 6x times negative 2. You got negative 1 times 3x. That's negative 3x right there. And then negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. Then when you combine your like terms, you'll get that negative 15x. So... Factoring and doing the FOIL uh, method is those are those are opposites of one another. So, anyways, that's all I got to say on that one. Moving along here, number forty-two. Uh, graph of linear function g. Uh, the graph of linear function g is shown on the grid. What is the zero of g? What you got to get in your head here: zero is a fancy name for an x-intercept. So basically, they're testing your knowledge on um, what you know some of the vocab is so the x-intercept be careful not the y-intercept the x-intercept is right there at positive or I'm sorry negative six so that is probably what we're going to bubble in right there so there's really not a whole lot else we can do there someone might think a zero might be a y-intercept so be careful on that it's not going to be nine or negative nine is going to be that negative six the reason they call it a zero is it's it's when the function or when the equation 
it's when the y value is equal to zero. So that's why they give it the name of a zero. They call these zeros. So it's at negative six comma zero. That's your next intercept there. And that's really all you can do there on that one. Okay. Next one here. Uh, which quadratic function in vertex form can be represented by the graph that has a vertex of three comma negative seven passes through the point one comma negative ten? Now, honestly, on this one right here, um, that they, they probably want you to set up and solve and derive an equation for this. So I'm going to show you that. But honestly, on something like this, I would probably type in all four of those equations and then see which one has the vertex at negative 3 comma negative 7 and then crosses that point 1 comma negative 10. Um, and then just figure out what graph matches that the best. Uh, but I'm going to show you kind of, I guess, what you would do if you didn't have a multiple choice a set of answers for this one. So vertex form of a quadratic, this is on the formula sheet that they give you. Looks like this, x minus h squared. They got that a multiplied out in front, and then you put the plus k. Okay. The h, and notice it's positive h and positive k, that's your vertex. So I'll put a little v next to that. And then a, I guess a is how wide or narrow your graph is say yeah I guess actually so technically a is which what we call a vertical stretch or shrink and it's what that a that a value changes how you stretch the graph out but it makes it appear wider narrower uh, based off of the different numbers out front so all right so Here's what we do for this one. They tell us the vertex is 3 comma negative 7. So I know that that is the h, and then the negative 7 is a k. Now the other point, we don't know exactly what's going on there. So we're just going to call those x and y. I'm sorry about the bell. So we just know that the graph needs to cross through that, so it's just a typical point where we're going to put x and y. And here's the whole idea. If we take the h, k and then the x and y stuff, and we plug it all in, the only thing we don't have plugged in for is a. So eventually we're going to solve that and we're going to get a as some value. And then we can choose our equation based off of that. So let's see what's going on here. So for the um, y equals, I'm going to plug in that negative 10. So I'm plugging in the negative 10 into this equation right here for y, placing that y. So we're going to go negative 10 for the y equals a, we don't know what A is, so I'm going to leave that as A. X, that's your other point, 1 right there, minus your H, so minus 3. Close parentheses squared, and then plus K. So the K is negative 7. So if you want to put plus negative 7 or just put minus 7, you can do either 1. And the whole idea now is let's simplify and solve for A, get A by itself. Now, we've got a couple of things we can simplify. We can simplify this stuff here inside the parentheses. We can't square it, so we're going to do those steps here. 1 minus 3 is going to be negative 2, I guess. And then we're going to square that. We've got to be really careful here with this next step. Whenever you square a negative, a negative 2 times negative 2, that's going to get you positive 4. Okay, so you're going to get positive 4. You're going to get A right there, so 4A minus 7 and then equals negative 10. We're going to add 7 to both sides because we're trying to get 8 by itself. So I think that's uh, negative 3 equals 4a. And we'll divide both sides by 4 to finish getting a by itself. So we get a is negative 3 over 4. Okay, so that eliminates a and c as your answers. And then just pay attention on B and D, I guess the difference is the sign inside of the parentheses. All right, and it's supposed to be minus H, so it's supposed to be minus 3 in this case. So D is the best answer. So be careful. B is a good-looking answer here. People see the positive 3 and the negative 7. They think that needs to match up with this right here. But when you plug in 3 for H, it appears as negative 3. So be really careful there on that. 
Now I'm just going to show you just how you can go and check and see if the points are indeed what they need to be. So we're going to use our graphing calculator. And this is kind of what I was bringing up earlier, taking your answer choices and then graphing them and seeing if they match. So instead of graphing all four options, I'm just going to do that one that we know is correct and then just show you why the graph matches the table. Um, two ways you can do a fraction out front. You can uh, do alpha y equals and then choose that first option. Then we can put the negative 3 and then over 4. Oh, that didn't work out. Let's see if it'll go. There we go. And then we can hit over and then parentheses x minus 3. And then minus 7. We can hit graph. Okay. So you can kind of see part of it. I guess the graph goes down right there. But there's the vertex right there. And that does indeed look like it's going through 3, comma, negative 7. You know, 3 on the x, down 7. And then to find the other point, we're just going to look at the table and make sure 1 comma negative 10 is an option. So yep, there's 1 and then comma negative 10, so that does indeed work out there. So that is indeed our answer there, D. Okay. Uh, the next few kind of go quicker here. The graph, of the part of the linear uh, function is shown on the grid. So which inequality best represents the domain? So you got to get in your head, domain, these are all your x values. These are not the y values, or they're not the gx values. Remember these, kind of like your y values right here. Um, so it's all the x values here in this case. Now x, that's kind of like dealing from left to right. So we're going to say x is left and right. How far to the left and how far to the right does this graph go? Notice that you also have some open and closed signs. So the way I see it here, this graph here goes all the way backwards to negative 9 on the x-axis there. And as far as your rightmost point, it goes over there to positive 2 right there. So we're between 9 and 2. Or negative 9, I guess. Negative 9 and 2. And here's the deal. One of them is a closed dot. One of them is an open dot. So remember, from middle school, Closed dots, we put the equal to sign. So we're going to say x is less than or equal to 2. That is because you have a closed dot and an x value of 2. Okay, look at your leftmost point there. Notice it's an open dot at negative 9 right there. So we're going to leave that as just x is greater than 9. Or I'm sorry, greater than negative 9. So that is your answer right there. It's going to be, I guess, f here in this case. So be careful, G switches around the inequalities there as far as greater than and, I'm sorry, less than and less than and equal to. So be careful. This would be like closed dot on the left-hand side and open dot on the right-hand side. Um, with H and J, I think what's going on here is they're giving you range values. So remember, your range values, those are going up and down. So this graph goes up to positive 3, but it comes down to negative 6. So between negative 6 and positive 3. And then they got the same action going on with the open and closed dots there. All right, so maybe if they were asking for the range, J would be the correct answer. But they were asking for the domain in this case. So, But G and H, those aren't the domain or range values at all right there because they had the open and closed dots messed up there. So there you go. So a little bit on that one. And then last one here for this video. A student graphed fx equals x, and then they took the fx equation, and then they did the plus 3. And this is just one of these things that you got to study here. This is on that cheat sheet, and I'll have that link down uh, in the description below. Or if you're on Google Drive, it'll probably be in a Google Drive folder. Um, so be looking out for that. But plus 3 outside the parentheses I know automatically that moves the graph three units up okay um, so let's see here it's not steeper steeper would be if it was like three times the whole thing three times FX but that's not the case here it's plus three um, so C and D yeah, it's not gonna affect the steepness 
So the graph of f is shifted up three units to create the graph of g. That looks like our best answer there. Be careful here. Um, this right here says f is shifted down. So if they had a minus three instead, that would be moving it down three. It's got the plus three, so it's got to be moving up. So C kind of looks like a tempting answer, but it's not actually C. Yeah. And that is it for this video.